Hi, everyone. I'm Rebecca Tolan. I'm a mind body coach, and I have a truly uplifting recovery story to share with you today. When I first met Nick Kutsas, he had suffered from decades of debilitating migraines, pain, fatigue, and so many other mind body symptoms. But he really applied these mind body principles called TMS by Dr. John Sarno. And some months later, he is saying that he has had a complete recovery. He is even running six miles every single morning. <laughs> He's my inspiration at this point. And I'm really excited to share the conversation with you. So Nick, thank you so much for doing this. Oh, thanks for having me, Rebecca. It's great. I'm happy to share my story and hopefully it can help someone else. Oh, it absolutely will. Like, I, I'm so glad we got to this point. And you have been through so much, as you've said, every symptom under the sun. Mm -hmm. And although we don't want to belabor that, I think it is helpful to lay out the different symptoms that you've had. So when people hear your story, they realize, oh, I can recover from these same kinds of conditions. So can you just kind of give us the Reader's Digest version <laughs> of your, your decades of chronic symptoms? What were, what were the main ones? Um, main ones was, I guess there is no main ones really. It's everything like from back pain, hip pain, you know, pelvic pain, burning in the back of my legs, you know, knee pain, eye pain, ear pain, <laughs> irritable bowel syndrome, uh, you know, weird visions, shocking migraines, vomiting. I think the worst was 13. I vomited like 13 times straight. That was lots of fun. Um, yeah, the list is massive. And then, you know, all the diagnosis, chronic fatigue syndrome. That I had chronic fatigue for a while. That was really bad. You know, really couldn't even get out of bed and walk and all that sort of stuff. And then fibromyalgia. But mine's like all the way back to childhood. So, you know, when I was a child, I used to get bad back attacks, you know, that dropped me to the floor. And then um, I'd get bad headaches, which would lead to migraines. So sort of every decade, I'd pick up something new. Yeah, I mean, you're really an example of what Sarno called the symptom imperative, where these symptoms just move and jump around the body, yeah. shape shift. But I'm sure for so many years, you didn't know what was going on. So what were the different things that you tried that, that didn't work? Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah, I had some fun. <laughs> some... Yeah, we all get creative on this path, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. One of the weirdest things was I saw, I can only describe him as a Mr. Miyagi. He was meant to be the back pain guru guy, didn't really speak. English at all and he looked like Mr. Miyagi and he was in in the in the city of Sydney and um yeah he had some weird things he'd do and like weird practices and then weird medicine like Chinese medicine you know like some weird stuff that you find out it's like dried cockroaches and <laughs> 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 that you're that you're eating or drinking yeah. yes yeah. I think I've had similar brews <laughs> yeah mad mad yeah. stuff what I remember I was lying on this, I don't know if you call it a bed or whatever, and he's doing whatever he's doing. I'm like, this is really weird. It's like all these people standing around me. I'm like, you know, half naked. I'm like, how did I end up to this? Like, what's going on? And yeah. then, you know, because you're just that desperate, you know, because you lose all hope. So you're prepared to do anything. And um, I remember then he said, I'll hit the power. I'm like, what's the power? And he'd put all this, um, those needles in your acupuncture and then started pumping electricity into it. And that was, that was just mad. Like my body started spasming him. And so, yeah, stuff like that. Then there was this massage guy on the central coast and he was meant to be the bees knees, right? Top shelf massage guy. He can cure anyone. You don't even have to tell him your symptoms and um, he'll, he'll fix you. I can handle pain. Like I can handle a lot of pain. He was brutal. I mean, brutal. He'd use a stick on you. He's an old fashioned, like 1970s rugby player. So wow. big hands and just stuff. Uh, you know, it would cane. You'd be yeah. sore for two days and then you'd feel really good because he's literally like beaten a stake. 
before you put yeah. it up. Well, and you feel better because you're so glad that treatment's over, right? <laughs> and and you know, sometimes these treatments, they're worse than the actual yeah. symptoms. But I, I know you tried everything from conventional medicine to alternative medicine yeah. for so many years. And I am curious along the way, because you just, you had such debilitating symptoms from the chronic fatigue syndrome to the, the agonizing pain and burning and migraines. I mean, how is this affecting your state of mind, your psyche and your quality of life all these years? Yeah, so it's patchy. So you'll go through times where life's just literally living hell you're really struggling to function in society, I guess, you know, but I'm pretty tough. I'm not a hero or trying to make myself out to be a hero, but um, there was times where work would literally force me to stay home and would ban me from the workplace because they could see, you know, the pain I was in, you know, cause I was, a, um, in, I was in finance and I have to go to people's homes. So, you know, I had a company car and I literally couldn't drive, right? Because the back pain was just off the charts. I couldn't even sit down. So then I'd have family members driving me to clients' homes to do to do appointments. So obviously that's a major HR issue, you know? Yeah. So, um, so stuff like that, because I, I just put up with it, you know, I just put up with the pain, but then you'd be covered in sweat because the pain's so bad, you know, your body just starts reacting. And um, so stuff like that, um, there was times when to even, I guess, live a normal life, I would just be using ice packs all day long, you know, for the burning, because I didn't know what was wrong with me. I didn't know about, Jock, you know, John Sarno then and TMS. So you just be freaking out. Why is my leg on fire? Like, what's going on? So you just be sitting on and lying on ice packs. Or then when it was the crippling back pain, you'd be sitting on wheat bags all day. So you just stunk of wheat bags and, you know, all that sort of stuff. So, yeah. um, and brutal. not knowing, I mean, it's like the symptoms are so severe and then the not knowing makes the fear so much worse, which, which we now know drives the symptoms even more. Yeah. Now, this was from the time you were a child through your twenties and thirties. And then you discovered John Sarno's work, I believe in your thirties. Yeah. And when you reached out to me, you really got this idea of mind body symptoms that basically the mind is creating real physical symptoms in the body because of these learned neural pathways in the brain. But you said you were kind of stuck. Tell me kind of where you were stuck with this, this TMS or mind body work when, was... when you reached out. Yeah, yeah, I was stuck because I had all the knowledge and I fully accepted it, like I fully believed it because I had a book cure initially, you know, so I went from having to be driven around and wheat packs and, and ice things to literally reading um, Sarno's book, picking up an axe, going outside and cutting down a tree. Like, that's just, you know, unbelievable. Incredible. You know? Just from that knowledge, your brain then realized your body's safe and you got this burst of energy and ability. Yes. But then after that, you kind of plateaued. Yeah. So that's what, that's what's happened. Yeah. During my, I guess, recovery journey of, of knowing about Sano. So I'd have moments like that. And there's been a, a few instances like that. But there were some symptoms I just could not remove. Um, and I had tried other TMS therapists and psychologists. I'd done all the online programs. I'd done, you know, all the different people's books. Um, but I just keep getting stuck. You know, I, I did so much journaling. Like, you know, I basically journaled myself into, a, I guess you could call it depression or despair. Um, but, but, but that's where it's interesting, right? Journaling did help. I did feel lighter. I did release all those emotions, things I never told anyone, you know? Yeah. Um, so it did help. So the reason I reached out to you was because I was still stuck. I'm like, well, I know it's a hundred percent TMS, a hundred percent. I know it is. I've got the evidence. I believe in it. I accept it. I've done the work. I've done the journaling. You know, I used to recite the um, Sino's daily, um, what's it called? He has 12. 12 daily reminders. Yeah. yeah. And he has so the all of that stuff. And so you just get frustrated, right? It's, yeah. and you start to lose hope again. And you're like, I don't understand. Like, why can't I get rid of this burning? Why? Because it was these 
I guess two or three main symptoms that just would never really go away. So that was the burning and that was the, the neck pain that would go up into my eye, into my head, which we call the migraines and, and vomiting. So it's, these symptoms are always hard for me to describe, but I know exactly what they are. So I could actually, I can actually box them in my mind. Okay, yeah, I've got this thing, I've got that thing. So there was like two or three of those things left, um, which I just could not remove. And, um, and I tried other people too, like I said, and all the courses and everything. So yeah, I, I just got really confused. And then I started yeah. to get to the point where, well, maybe that's it then. Maybe this is as good as it gets. I'm a lot better than right. what I was, you know, I'm a lot better than what I was. I'm living a normal life. If you, yeah, from time to time, I might be out for a few days vomiting with a shocking migraine. I might have burning for a week, yeah. you know. Um, it shows how bad it was that you, you got to the point where, okay, that's an improvement at least. I yeah. know what's wrong with me. I've had some improvement through the journaling, which is kind of just really venting emotions onto the page. Um, but I know it can be discouraging because you think, well, I know what it is. You know, why yeah. do I still have these symptoms? And when you came to me, you were so diligent. And I, and I love working with people like you who really get it, who like understand this is a mind-body process, but there can be just some missing puzzle pieces. So what would you say the turning point was for you? When did things start shifting and, and why? Yeah, the, the why one's an interesting one because I stop and now and reflect on that. You know, after a few sessions, I sort of put it to the test what we had been doing. And I don't know if you recall, the first, I basically challenged myself, right? So I actually um, decided to go and do gardening, which I haven't been able to do for years. And when I mean gardening, I'm not talking about you know, pulling out a couple of plants. When I you say I'm gardening, like I'm pretty full on. Whatever I do is full on, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So it was like a massive, you know, garden bed, you know, it's like two or three of them full of trees and weeds and everything. And I just went for gold, you know got out the mattock and the hoe and the shovel and dug the whole thing out. It was like backbreaking work for the best of person. And it was like, I put all of our work to the test and um, I really didn't have much pain. And then if I did have much pain, I was just like, eh, like the confidence was so strong again. So I guess why it started to work for me is because it was building up my confidence again. Um, you know, by doing the work and by talking to someone every fortnight was like that reassurance that, you know, every, everything is okay. Even though I knew it, it's just having someone, you know, telling me that. And um, cause you know, sometimes you have a not out of body experience. You think, what, what is this TMS? This is a load of baloney. What are you talking about? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You just, yeah. you just, it's just weird from time to time. Yeah. So, um, but the big three things for me, you know, were the somatic um, tracking and the self-compassion. And um, I, I guess you'd call it being grounded, you know, just being present in that, in that moment. Um, so looking back, definitely the somatic tracking, sort of like somatic tracking or somatic meditations really helped me. And, you know, I wonder if it's just, it was a way of calming that nervous system down. You know. Yeah. And, and let's kind of break these down one at a time. Cause I think these three elements that really helped you recover are often missing pieces for people. Um, and, and yeah, the somatic tracking was really probably the main tool that helped me recover from chronic fatigue syndrome as well. I would say that and the knowledge. And I think the writing helps a lot of people, but it's really important to get into the body. And as you're bringing attention to these sensations through a lens of safety, you're retraining your brain that they're safe. And then that danger signal can turn down in the brain. So it's, it's like a brain and body retraining. So you were doing these somatic meditations every day? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a really powerful tool, especially when you're able to bring your mind into your body without a lot of anxiety. For some people, it's a little bit intense, but yeah. you know, it's mind body healing. And sometimes people try to skip the body. <laughs> you know, we can do a lot with the mind, but it's, it's also important to include the body. Now I recall us having 
quite a few conversations about self-compassion and how so many of us try to bully ourselves into getting better. We're mm -hmm. trying to, we're criticizing ourselves for having these symptoms or not getting better more quickly. And actually that activates the brain and nervous system, which then perpetuate the symptoms. So how are you able to make that pivot into being kinder to yourself? Yeah, that, that's been massive for me. So the first thing is to realize that I had no self-compassion. I didn't know. I just thought that was normal. I just thought if you've got something to do, you suffer until you do it. That's my mindset, right? Uh, I can give you just a, a basic example. Don't go to the toilet. You just stop. I know it seems silly, but yeah. you know, I need to go to the toilet, but I'm not going to go to the toilet until I get all this work done. And I'm not talking about waiting 10 minutes to the, go to the toilet. I'm talking like eight or nine hours you know, just being just that brutal on your body or through it. Yeah. And being yeah. detached from your body and its basic needs. And we know like when we don't take care of the basic needs, those are really the same or related danger signals in the brain that then can activate chronic pain and other symptoms. Yeah. yeah. So I think but that's a big I, shift, like, and especially I think as, as a man, it's harder in our culture. I know you're in Australia, I'm in the United States, but in, in both cultures, you know, there's this kind of macho yeah. culture where men are supposed to be tough and you really embrace the self-compassion work. We, we worked some with Kristen Neff's approach. How are you able to start doing that? And, and give us an example of what that looked like, you know, on a regular basis, how your internal dialogue changed. Yeah, definitely. So first was identifying it, that I wasn't being self-compassionate and then actually understanding what that means. Because the first time I heard you say it and looked it up, I went, what the heck are they talking about? <laughs> you know, right. Yeah, it just sounds stupid. Of course I like myself. What are you going on about? And then... I think for me, it was observing my thoughts and behavior, like really trying to stake a step back and saying, geez, you're being brutal, like to yourself. And I think, imagine if that was a child or someone you loved and cared about, would you do that to them? No, you wouldn't. You know, so why are you doing it to yourself? Even talking to you, I get like a, a, a shiver, like a, you know, you just, and you don't realize how brutal you are. Like this whole TMS process is just pulling pulling it all back you know you really get to see who you really are and um and it's tricky right being self-compassionate's tricky because then you start beating yourself up for not being self-compassionate right yourself. which is not actually self-compassion right to beat yourself up for not being compassionate yeah. that's so yeah. typical how many yeah. of us start with that but i used to love when you would tell me this stories so to go back a little bit, you had, after the gardening, you had said, I would just do anything to run again, because I know you yeah. love jogging. And so we started working with that. And you would tell me these stories about how you would run through the pain and say, you know, great job, mate, you really yeah. got this, like, good for you cheering yourself on like you would a child who you loved or a friend who you cared about. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's been massive for me. So um, I talk to my brain a lot when the symptoms would be around and the talking to my brain, like the dialogue changed to basically full self-compassion, you know, because it was always, don't worry, don't fret, you know, um, you're safe. But it was like, you're awesome. You're doing a wonderful job. It was like not focusing on that pain or sensation. It was like, no, just focus on loving yourself. That's the simplest way I can explain it, you know, and really encouraging yourself and, and embracing yourself. Like, you know, I'd go for the run when we kicked off trying running and the pain was just off the charts, ridiculous pain. It was crazy. And I just accepted it and I'd keep running because I just, I, I'm getting emotional even talking about it because, you know, I loved it so much and for it to be taken away from you and then to start to see that you're reclaiming it. And um, I'd really just, just constant words to myself, you know, you're just so good. I'm so proud of you. You know, you're doing a great job. You know what I mean? I'd stand at the end of my run and <laughs> do these ones. How good is this? <laughs> you know, I know people I used to it. stare at me, but don't worry about people staring at you. And um, right. that, 
ecstatic, you know, that feeling of being ecstatic, like, you know, you've yes. won something massive, like you feel unbelievable and yes. really embracing that, like just letting that soak in. Um, and especially because, yes. you know, it, and because I ran in the morning, so it's so nice. Like it's really early. There's, there's the dew, there's the smell of the flowers and the trees. It was just beautiful. You know, I just love yeah. it. Well, and, and that actually leads to the third thing that you mentioned that was such a big factor for you is that being present in the moment, being yeah. in your senses. So really smelling the eucalyptus trees and the roses in that park where you ran, um, just taking in the sights and scents. And, and I really got the impression from you that you were literally truly appreciating and savoring that you could run and all the things you had to be grateful for, even when there was pain. So that's yeah. the thing. So many people, and I did it too, but wait for the symptoms to go to enjoy life, but it doesn't work that way, right? Because when you start enjoying life, that sends a different signal to your nervous system. Yeah. hundred percent. What you just said is massive. Like learning just to enjoy life and love life, love your surroundings, love you in spite of the pain. To me, that's yeah. the biggest key you know it's how we react to the pain it's so easy to go woe is me here we go again you know what I mean here's yes. the pain again because it gets to a point for for me it's like I've got the pain I've got two options stick my head in the sand life sucks you know shoot me now it's all over or I'm just going to get on living even with the symptoms even yeah. with the symptoms we, you have really one of the more dramatic stories I've ever heard, just to, to go into detail with the, the running. I believe, was it nine days you kept running with really severe pain <laughs> yeah. until there was like a turning point? Yeah. Yeah. What, so yeah. what happened, if you could just kind of take us back there? Because a lot of people give up well before that turning point moment that you had. Yeah, it could have been so easy to give up. So the pain was in firstly in the hip, like someone was stabbing me in the hip, like really sharp. Um, and then it would switch sides, which would make me laugh because I knew what it was doing. Um, and then all around the hip and pelvis was like someone was just literally, it's hard to explain how bad it was, but it was the worst type of pain. And it, it was just getting worse and worse and worse but I never got down. I never got upset. I was still in, you know, loving myself and doing all the stuff we just discussed. But the turning point was day nine, sitting on the end of my bed, you know, putting my um, socks on to go outside to put my shoes on. I remember just sitting there and the pain was brutal, right? So the pain was now 24 seven, right? So, and um, so you'd sleep with it. You'd, well, if you could call it sleep and you'd wake up with it. Um, so it's not just I'm running now I've got pain I stop running the pain goes away no 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 the pain keeps going <laughs> it yeah keeps that going. danger signal was was on and it, it just was kept on generating the pain yeah it did so that was a conscious choice I made sitting at the edge of the bed and I remember I had the thought this isn't going to go away Nick maybe you should just hold off for a few months and do some more deep work with Rebecca you know, those thoughts started to come in and I had a decision to make, right? Like a fork in the road sort of situation. And I just went quiet and into myself and said, no, I love myself. I'm not giving this up. This is means the world to me. I, I just love this so much. And there's nothing wrong with me. Brain, do what you've got to do. Now, maybe not everyone can be like this. I'm like, bring it. Come on. Is that all you got? you can do worse than that. Come on. You know, so that was my just complete defiance. It just and you just defiance. went running anyway. You I ran went. through it with that defiance. I mean, that is the ultimate outcome independence where, yeah. you know, you were totally indifferent to the symptoms. And then as I remember in that ninth run, you had a moment where the pain literally just turned off. Yeah, it did. And it was when I was talking to my brain. So I'm, I'm running the pains crazy. So I had gotten to a point where I would just smile. Okay, I would feel peace and calm. And I would smile when I would notice the pain, right? It's hard to describe. But it's the somatic tracking that brought me to that, you know, the work when we did together, where we did like, uh, I guess, a role, a role play or um, 
you know, that work yeah, where we like played it out. Graded, graded exposure is yeah. what Howard Schubner calls it, but where you're basically imagining the activity you want to do, like running with ease and joy. And then as you imagine it, you can start moving into actually doing it because that is retraining your brain. Yeah. And that, I, I, that's really helped me too, you know, doing that once with you. And then I used to do it every day, right? I do it every day by myself at home. So I got to a point where I could actually make the pain come on when I was lying in bed doing it. I could actually feel the pain come on and then I could react to it. So I was fully prepared for this. So that's what I mean by when the pain come on, I just, I would have a big smile across my face. It's like, I know what's going on. Yes. And, and I'd just laugh. And then after you've done, you know, these meditations for so long, you can just flick a switch without doing it. And you're in that state. That's what happened to me. And I'm still yeah. like that. Um, so that's what happened with the running. So I did that. And, and on that ninth day, when I decided to go and run through the pain and I did that, and then the pain just, stopped and hasn't come back since that is just such an incredible testament to this work and you had done the training with somatic tracking so your brain knew these sensations aren't dangerous my body's not in danger but it was still perpetuating them and then it's like it finally got the message it's okay there's no reason to to create these symptoms because he's not in danger and he's not feeding into that, that neuro circuit. So tell us a little bit so people know how far you've come. Um, what's your workout routine like now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, let's just say I was pretty unfit when I started running. I kind of couldn't I don't even like make 30 seconds. I was like a beached whale rolling around. <laughs> it was so funny. People are staring at me. I'm all right, darling. I'll be fine. I was just out of breath and oh my goodness, you know. <laughs> so you've got to laugh. It was pretty funny. So I went from that to, um, you know, 30 second run. Now I run, I can run for hours, you know, and I, I still go every day. Um, and I, I'm a, I love it. I love going in the mornings. You know, it's a bit of old school Rocky get up at four, four thirty, because I just, I just love that morning air, and um, that just works for me. So I did that. Then there was other things I had to overcome. I had, um, I hadn't been able to do push-ups. I hadn't been able to do squats. Um, when I'd learnt about Sano, I started to try and you know, do things again. And those things used to cause really bad crippling pain, like off the chart pain. So I was able to do it, you know, and I was able to, and that's, it seems so light how I'm talking about it. I just can't stress how much of a miracle that is. Like a few times I tried to do squats and I was out of action for like months. Like it was like there was bulging things in my back, you know, the pain was just crazy. So um, yeah, so I, no problems, you know, do a hundred squats a day, hundred, I set a goal of a hundred pushups, you know, I'm almost there. I've gotten up to just under 80 now. So I went for, I couldn't even do one. I was starting off with girls pushups <laughs> and I'm doing it against the wall. I'm like, mate, you're soft. What the heck are you doing? <laughs> you know? And, oh my uh, gosh, Nick, if you weren't in Sydney and I wasn't in San Diego, I would hire you to be my personal <laughs> trainer, <laughs> but I would say, take it easy on me. I mean, that's just, that's incredible. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. like you went from not being able to really even bend over without pain yeah. to being in pretty peak physical condition. So I wonder if there's some other things. I mean, you laid out the three, um, the three main things that really helped you, but people always want to know kind of what a day in the life of your recovery was like, you know, what were yeah. you actually doing each day? Because this went on for, I think we worked together maybe about eight months. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what were some other things you could share that you haven't already that you were just doing on a daily basis or a weekly basis that, that other people who are still suffering might be able to try? Yeah, sure. Well, I'll go right back to when I first learned about TMS. So I'm, I'm pretty dil diligent, right? Say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it and I stick to it and commit to it, right? So if you're just learning about these, the first what I used to do is threes. I, I like threes. So I used to do knowledge. So every morning when I'd wake up, I'd do knowledge. And you can do that however you like. Read a Sano book, watch a YouTube thing, 
Um, so I do knowledge. Then I would do a um, meditation slash sort of journaling. Um, and then the third thing I'll do is exercise back then, which wasn't really exercise, but it was just something to, to burn. For me, I, get, I can get bad reactions to journaling. You know, I can get a bit hyped up, a bit ang angry. Yeah. So, um, so sort of burning it off a bit helps. So, yes. um, so then when I started working with you, I sort of went back to those three things again trying to find so i had the education and knowledge i didn't really need to do that and there's a, there is a time when you need to stop like you <laughs> yeah i can't stress yeah. that enough yeah. um so for me you know the daily stuff something that really has and i still do every day is i go for really slow walks i mean really slow mm -hmm. i mean really slow and just constantly you know putting your hand on your heart or your stomach and really taking in deep breaths and sometimes i'll just stop and stand there and stare at the trees like but really focus in see if you can see that leaf what does that leaf look like like what's the shape like that for me that really puts me you know grounds me keeps me present because that was one of the hardest things to overcome okay i'm never living here i'm either 15 years behind or you know, a few months ahead you know and and that causes so much angst um, so for me, one thing I struggled with when I first heard about TMS is they tell you that there's nothing wrong with you. You don't need to do anything. I don't, I don't agree with that. You need to do the work you need to do. Yeah. You can't just, no, <laughs> no, no. Yeah. you need to do something, you know? And so I try to box it in, you know what I mean? Like the, the knowledge, the journaling, the meditation and the, and the physical stuff. And um, so since we've been working together, so um, before I started running, that's what I'd do. I'd wake up, I'd do a somatic tracking um, or, or a meditation. Then I'd go for my nice slow walks. So I'd do a couple of those a day or even a nice slow drive. People don't like that. I'll be doing like 20 kilometers per hour in an 80 zone. <laughs> and um, just, it's like trying to slow my whole system down. Yeah, you know. you're, you're really coming into the present moment and getting yeah. out of that ruminating mind, which we do through being in the senses, just feeling ourselves standing on the earth, like you say, looking at the leaves. And, and I agree with you, about 90% of people at least need to really do the work. There's, they say, yeah. you know, 10% have a book cure. Um, but the work is can be simpler than you think, right? It's not easy, but coming into the present moment, just being where you are, but it requires retraining your mind over and over to see what's around you, smell what's around you, you know, feel the sensations in your body in a new way. And it's something that changes the whole quality of your life because you're not just spinning in your mind, right? You're living yes. this fuller bodied experience. And also that allows more emotions to move through us as well as body movement. I'm also a big fan of body movement, which can really help move emotion. And I'm curious for you being, being a musician and someone who's journaled, did meditations, um, creates music, what were the most helpful ways for you to really get in touch with emotions and, and release some of that energy? Yeah, so I had tried journaling, and I think I journaled myself to death. So then I started, um, if symptoms would arise, I would start asking my question, you know, I'd ask myself, you know, what's, what's going on now in my life? Like, and I try and put that those symptoms with emotions, you know, I'm sad because this is happening, or I'm, I'm angry because of that situation. But um, being able to play guitars really helped. You know, I've always been from a young age, being able to tap into my emotions, um, even though I didn't know what emotions were. Um, let's call it feelings, sensations in my body. Yeah. So, um, so what I would do, what I do, and I still do is I might just play a couple of chords, you know, a couple of chord progressions or um, just a melody and I'll just come, come up with it, you know, but I just like sort of, take a few deep breaths and I pick up my car and my guitar and try and sense how I'm feeling and let it come through, come yeah. through, through and out into, into the guitar. I just, 
journaling's great. I just find that helps me so much more. Um, yeah. Cause I found with journaling, like sometimes your mind is faster than the pen. You can't keep up. You right. Know, with, yeah. Exactly. I know. And that's one reason I like to type more than handwrite, but even so I find that. And I mean, you're lucky that you have that outlet of music, but I think any kind of arts, even listening to music, if someone's not yeah. a musician can really help yeah. us get in touch with emotion as well as, like you said, body movement. And it's finding the tools that work for you. I mean, some people swear by journaling, but like you, that was not a big part of my recovery. It was much more the somatic practices, being in nature, yeah. gentle body movement that kind of made my, my body feel safe again, like, like yoga and that kind of thing. Um, but also the labeling is important that you mentioned, right? Just to say, I'm feeling angry now. I'm feeling scared. And studies have shown that that actually turns down the activity of the amygdala. So it's not magnifying it. It's just telling our system, yeah, we have this emotion. It's acknowledging it's present. So all that's just really important. And then something else I want to bring up that was so pivotal for you, and again, um, culminated in a pretty dramatic experience, I'll let you explain in your own words, is um, grappling with acceptance and radical acceptance to the point where you really surrendered um, the need for these symptoms or your body to change and fully accepted what was happening. So describe that to us. Yeah, it, it sort of, we were, everything was going well, wasn't it? I was running and things were disappearing. It was going well. And then I guess you could call it like some form of flare up where um, everything came back all at once, every symptom under the sun. And it was just absolute, it was brutal. Uh, the only way to describe it was like, hell on earth like it was just crazy and it wasn't just my physical symptoms it was mental health you know OCD came back anxiety it was basically best way to describe it is like the internal rage that Sano talks about was coming out literally coming out mm -hmm. and I perceived everything as a threat as danger you know, even from just watching the TV, my mind would go, this guy's having a go at me. What's his problem? You know, I would it wasn't saying anything to me. And then you think, am I going crazy? You know, what's going on? And I, I'd had this once before many years ago and, um, you know, all in your arms, it's like your veins are just popping out. And um, it's just, it's brutal. That's very hard to live when you're like that. It's words can't just describe it. Um, and, so it just it went on for days and then the symptoms were just crazy. The physical pain was just crazy from, from, you know, all over my body. And then it got really, really crazy. Like I thought I was going to die. So I was getting like electric shocks to my, my, my heart region. And like you could literally see the muscles around where I guess your heart is like spasming, you know, to zzz, 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 like that. And just one of them, you know, you just scream and drop. So I had, I'd had that before in my back, but now it was doing it there. I went, well, that's it. I'm, I must, I'm having a heart attack or there's something wrong with me. And um, I thought, well, that's it. That's over. That's the end, you know? And um, so I basically got to a point because I was so, so ferocious in trying to stay alive in trying to fight this in trying to fight the symptoms to lessen them. Right. So I was doing everything I could, you know, I even started journaling again, just doing anything I could. You know, it was just a hundred percent energy, attention, focus, coupled with fear and anxiety um, to make all of this go away. This was like a flare up times 10. It's like you had been doing well, but then suddenly with some life changes, these symptoms came back in full force. And also what I'm hearing is you got a taste of the rage that Sarno explains our brain is trying to protect us from. And it sounds like mm. you saw up close and personal why our brain is going to protect us from that rage and instead give us physical symptoms. Yeah. And that extremely rage is, intense ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
it makes sense, right? Why the brain's trying to just, yeah, distract you because this rage is crazy and it's timeless. That's one thing I noticed. There was things coming out of me from decades ago. Mm. But then I, I got to a point, it's, it's like I sort of gave up, but I didn't. It's, but this isn't a depressive thing. I wasn't I'm not a depressive person and I've been through a lot. Um, but I just gave up fighting because I actually thought about it, right? The, the whole point of this is to distract us. My whole being at that time was trying to fight back to survive. Well, that's I'm doing what it's wanting me to do, right? That's the ultimate attention, the ultimate focus, the ultimate fear of it, right? Because we talked about a few moments ago, you just run in spite of the pain. That's the point you've got to get to. I can live irrespective of what's happening to me, you know, because there's yeah. nothing really wrong with me. So, and I thought about that and that's when I just had to accept it. And I'm not saying this is for everyone. I literally did think I was going to die because what was going on around my heart and I just accepted death. That's, that's the only way I can explain it. I said, I'm going, I'm going to go to bed now. And if I die, so what? That to me sounds like total surrender. I mean, yeah. you're just surrendering completely to what is and any sort of resistance to the symptoms, which I can't even imagine doing with that kind of intensity. I mean, you have a very high threshold. And of course, I do want to make clear for people who really think they're having a heart episode, they really should get checked. I mean, you had had a history of these symptoms and it's a different situation. But, um, you know, these symptoms can mimic a heart attack and you, you experience that. Obviously, people need to make sure they don't have that going on. But in your case, you didn't. It was it was mind mind body symptoms. So you just surrendered. You gave into that, and then what happened? Then I went to bed, and then the next day I felt really emotional. I felt really feeling. <laughs> it's hard to describe. Just I just had all these feelings in my body. It was weird. So I've got a games room. So I went into my games room, turned it all on and it's pretty dark in there. And I was sitting under, I guess, the neon lights to, and I just lied on the floor, listening to records, right? I've got a record collection. And then all these past, not all, but some past experiences came back to me. Like, and it was so real, like it was just happening. And I could even smell things from back then. I'm talking things from like 30 years ago. So all of that's, you know, it was a few examples of that. And it was really beautiful, like really wonderful. Like these were good, good experiences, good past things, which felt, yeah. So, so that, that happened. And I can now, even now can still tap into that. It's like I've opened up some part of my brain or something where I can, can tap into that stuff. Cause you know, that's when I learned when I was reading about Sano and he'd talk about that you know, something that happened 40 years ago just happened today in your mind, right? It's timeless. Yeah. yeah. When, you, there, so. when you access that part of the brain, those, those yeah. emotional memories. And, you know, when you describe this, Nick, I, I know I told this to you previously, but it, it reminds me of when people describe a near-death experience where they either almost die or they do die and come back to life. And in between that, have these beautiful vivid memories of their life and see it through a completely different lens and then when they come back they don't have the symptoms i'm thinking of someone named anita morjani who actually had lots of tumors and essentially died of cancer and had a near death experience and came back and had no cancer in her body and although your experience is different you actually described that all your symptoms vanished after that. Like yeah. they were just, they were gone. It was, you don't even have to work with them anymore. Is that correct? Correct. Everything's gone and something else has happened. Like I just feel fantastic. I don't know how to describe it. It's like, it's someone's done a grease and oil change. You've got a new body. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Like it's unbelievable. Like when I was running, I thought I felt really good running now I feel good running like I because you don't know any better right you don't no. know you, you know so now it's like holy crap I've got like more movement and stride and like I don't know it's it's just it's a different 
it's like a movie and so I'm a body double. <laughs> Someone <laughs> swipes my body. <laughs> Whatever you have, I would love it if you could bottle it up and give it to all of us. Because I mean, that is very rare. So yeah. it's like you went from not really having many symptoms anymore to, I think, as you said, feeling bloody fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bloody fantastic, mate. I feel freaking unreal. Like, yeah, I don't think I've ever felt like this, to be honest. So I guess this is how no normal people, is there such thing as normal people feel? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if normal people feel that way. I don't, I don't <laughs> even think I feel the way you're describing. I mean, to me, and I, I have seen this sometimes, the lower people go, sometimes the potential is for, for them to go e rise even higher and, and have even a fuller healing. But that kind of thing is very mysterious. You know, we don't really know why that happened to you or yeah. to some people. But just what an incredible blessing. And so like from this new state of mind and also something we didn't talk about, you had had insomnia before and you said sometimes brain fog, yeah. but described now deep sleep and mental oh, clarity yeah. and a sense of joy. And I mean, so what's your life like now? And what are you, what are your plans? You've, you've <laughs> changed a lot of things. Yeah. Well, I pretty much spend most days now at the cafe. <laughs> so living the nice. dream, I just nice. hang out at the cafe. So do that a lot or in my arcade tinkering, but um, I've set some goals because I'm big on setting goals, you know, but um, I'm really embracing feeling good. I just really, I'll just stop throughout the day and just go, how good is this? How good do I feel? My mate Bernie's gone. There's no burning. I guess what? Well, I'm full of energy. I actually slept 12 hours, you know, I, you know, because I used to go weeks without sleeping, you know, so um, I'm just really embracing it. But I haven't stopped some of the things that you've taught me, you know. I'm actually still doing somatic tracking, which is weird. There's nothing really to track, but I actually really like it. I actually yes. Yes. enjoy it. And I'm still I do it every day too. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a great way just to process the emotions of the day because we still experience emotions on a daily basis and then you don't have to store that. Yeah. yeah. No, it's it's great. Like, you know, you sometimes you think, oh, well, it was worth it to go through all this to become like that. I'm some days I think, yeah, other days I'm like, no, it wasn't. No. <laughs> it was, it was, it was I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you on that. <laughs> well, I mean, if anyone deserves this, you do, Nick. I mean, you have been so diligent, not just the time you and I worked together, but for so many years and, and even decades before you had discovered this work. But you really applied it every single day. And it's just yeah. incredible to see this happen for you. And I also just want to bring up you know, these symptoms have a certain wisdom. Now, yes, they are trained pathways in the brain and we want our brain just to know we're safe, but they also sometimes guide us out of life circumstances that we're really not enjoying anymore. So how did that play out for you in terms of kind of seeing how the symptoms were almost a barometer of when you were going in the right direction of your life? or when you're going in the wrong direction and how, how did you change your life? Cause you didn't always just get to hang out in the cafe every day when we <laughs> first started working together. No. So there has been life changes. I did have to make life changes. So I, so I guess in some um, respect, it was good that this happened. You know, what I've, I've gone through decades, a life of it, because yeah, because because that's what I started to to realize, right? When you really get deeper and deeper, you start to realize I'm I'm not happy, I'm not happy in this job or I'm not happy in this career, you know, and you really start to to realize, well, why am I doing this? Like, why am I actually doing this? You know what I mean? Like, you, and then you when you get even deeper, I got to a point where I could actually see when I do a certain type of work. I would then get a certain type of pain. I could actually start to connect it, right? Yes. This, you know, and, and it's hard to get to that because life's so busy. You're in so much pain. You're just going around chasing your tail. And that's why I keep harping on about doing these slow walks, just slowing everything down so you can get real clear and you can start to pick things off. And, yes. and that's what I've, I've, I've done. Now, I don't know if you have to change your life. I don't know that's for everyone 
but for me that was a big part of it you know yeah. change you know for some make, people make, i find it's not necessary and for others it is and and that's really insightful that you were able to see when you did certain kinds of work that you really didn't want to be doing anymore like its lifespan had come and gone you got symptoms Yes. And you were really willing to make those changes, you know, which, which stirs things up a lot. And I know a lot yes. of that was happening before you had this big flare up, but you moved through it to the other side. So it's just, it's incredible to see your, your whole, I think, just transformation as a, as a human being. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. But self, like you said before, self-compassion, because if you have true self-compassion, you won't do those things anymore. Like if you really cared about yourself and really yes. loved yourself. And I know it's, you're thinking, oh, what's he talking about loving himself? What a load of baloney. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's real. I like, it's I can real. testify. It. Yeah. At first, it just seems like a concept. I was the same way. I just drove my body around to try to achieve things. And it took a long time to come back into self-compassion, but then it's like, nobody knows us better and what we need than ourselves, right? Yeah. So it's like, we can meet our own needs physically, emotionally, mentally, when we really start tapping in. So just in closing, is there anything else you want to share about this work, mind, body healing, or people who are still struggling? To me, all I want to say is there's hope. You know, this may be, you may have heard about Sano before, maybe for the first time. I know what it feels like to have no hope. That is horrible. It's, there's nothing worse than losing hope and despair. But I can promise you there is hope. If you've been to the doctors and you've been checked out and there's nothing really wrong or structurally, you know, this TMS stuff is real. It, it really is. And um, I know some people don't have instant results and it's hard to see, but all I'd say is just don't give up, mate. Don't give up. Yes, that is such an important message. Thank you so much for sharing your story, Nick. It's just an honor to know you and to, to witness all these changes. And I really appreciate you sharing so personally. No, thank you. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> So if you're watching this, like Nick said, there really is hope, whether you're brand new to this TMS work or you've been doing it a while and feeling stuck. I see people recover from chronic pain, chronic fatigue syndrome, long COVID. Sometimes it just takes really finding the right puzzle pieces. I'm gonna be offering a eight week live course called Be Your Own Medicine starting September 22nd. If you're really ready to reclaim your health, I invite you into the course. I'll share the knowledge and practices that Nick and I have been talking about and those that helped me heal from 13 years of chronic fatigue syndrome. There's 18 different somatic meditations to retrain your brain and regulate the nervous system. It's a really supportive community, so you don't have to do this alone. You can join us for live classes or watch the recordings on a private website. You can find out more at rebeccatolan.com slash course. And if you just want more information on mind-body healing, you can sign up for a free somatic meditation and blogs on my website. That's at rebeccatolan.com. And also subscribe to this YouTube channel to find out when I release more videos. Take care, everyone.